हो गया स्ट्रीमिंग अब चालू ऐसा क्या मेरे में क्यों नहीं दिख रहा है सर रिफ्रेश करिए मैम स्ट्रीमिंग चालू है दिख रहा है मैम मेरे में भी दिख रहा है चालू है मैम दिख रहा है चलो ठीक है अच्छी बात चालू है एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स गुड इवनिंग टू वन एंड ऑल हां अब दिख रहा है ठीक है बज गए मैम मैम स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं कविता जी हाँ, जी 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 स्टॉप शेयरिंग करें और स्टार्ट करें जी। यस मैम अब आप मैं बस तो हटा भी दीजिए जीवन सर जी जीवन सर को होस्ट है आप देख लेंगे good evening and hearty welcome to this international webinar on covid-19 and society this is the technical team of durga mahavidyalaya raipur i am kavita bharti and with me is mr ajay devangan with the permission of the chair we commence today's program the webinar is streaming live on two platforms that is zoom and youtube so without any delay i hand over the floor to mr jeevan sagar the co convener of this webinar uh, over to you sagar sir thank you ms kavita thank welcome, you very much welcome sir all revered professor kirti tiwari ma'am the guest of the honor dr r k tiwari the principal durga mahavidyalaya professor carolyn hasing and dr ram sharma the speakers of the day dr pratibha mukherjee sahukar head department of english and the convener of this webinar the faculty fraternity of durga mahavidyalaya and other reputed uh, educational institutes distinguished guests dear research scholars and students my warm greetings and a cordial welcome to all in this webinar as you all know that today is humanity an extraordinary challenge the challenge is extraordinary because the challenge is unknown the attack is pan humanity and the war room is still discussing the strategy the future looks uncertain yet among this gloomy sights the humanity is alive with grit and uh, die another day uh, die another day attitude how covid-19 has changed the overall web of society what are the impacts of it on our education how are we going to battle it are we future ready are we able to think out of the box to overcome this scenario these are some of the moot questions among many others that have stormed all of us and how could it have been better to have organized this august intellectual gathering to contemplate over it to come up with some solutions and be action oriented durga mahavidyalaya has always cradled think out of the box attitude ever since its Uh, it's uh, inception today's program is uh, yet another extension of the same rich legacy uh, before i hand over the screen and mic to dr pratibha mukherjee sahukar i request the august gathering to keep your mics muted for the smooth run of the program 
So against this background, I would like to call upon Dr. Pratibha Mukherjee Sahukar for the welcome address and also enlighten us with the concept note. Ma'am, the screen and mic is all yours. Thank you, Jeevan. Guest of honor, Dr. Kirti Tiwari, Professor and Head Department of English Government, JY Chhattisgarh College, Raipur. Our esteemed speakers of the day, Professor Carolyn Hyacin, Pro uh, Professor Department of IMSC, Iowa State University, Iowa, USA. Dr. Ram Sharma, Associate Professor and Head Department of English, JV College, Bhagwat, Uttar Pradesh. Our patron, Dr. R.K. Tiwari, Principal Durga Mahavidyale, Raipur. Members of the faculty, all scholars, researchers, and attendees, a very good evening to one and all. And a very good morning to Dr. Carolyn Hessing. It's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all on behalf of the Postgraduate Department of English, Durga Mahavidyale, Raipur, to the international webinar on COVID-19 and society. The topic of today's international webinar looks very simple, but the situation it depicts is not. An extraordinary st stimulus demands an extraordinary response. The outbreak of the coronavirus, novel coronavirus, COVID-19, however you choose to refer to it, poses extraordinary challenge before the entire human society across the globe and has shaken us out of our reverie. COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc across the world, cursing everyone into their houses. The spread of this pandemic has put thousands and thousands of life at risk and brought about innumerable casualties today. We are experiencing one of the most taxing periods post independence and our perseverance is being put to test. Locked inside our houses, we are looking at a tumultuous present and an uncertain, a very uncertain future. Although COVID-19 has distanced us in the physical world, it has brought us closer digitally. Our meetings online are a testament to the human spirit which soldiers on. So in the midst of this pandemic, we have to look for the silver lining for our own well-being and our sanity. This crisis has given us an opportunity to deep musing and to learn and unlearn that can help us opt for critical choices to improve our lives. Today's honored guests would definitely, with their deliberations, help us engage our, ourselves in this fruitful discussion, and we are all looking forward to it. Warm wishes once again, thank you. And now I invite our patron, Dr. R. K. Tiwari, for his welcome address, sir. Namaste to everyone. The guest of honor, Professor Kirti Tiwari, the esteemed speakers, Professor Carolyn Hazing from Iowa University, USA. Professor Ram Sharma from Bhagpat, Uttar Pradesh. Dr. Pratibha Mukherjee Sahukar and participants. Good evening to one and all. I welcome you all to this webinar on a very relevant topic, COVID-19 and society. This pandemic has changed our lives. Nowadays, we are using the term new normal to define the present scenario, but I feel that the new normal is not so normal. It is now a society of distancing, social distancing, which is leading to economic changes, bringing in major changes in almost all spheres of society. We are concerned about these issues. Dr. Pratibha Mukherjee, head department of English, and her team has put in a lot of hard work I am confident that this webinar will prove an enlightening and enriching experience for all of us. 
once again i welcome you all thank you very much thank you very much sir it was really wonderful to hear from you your words are always a source of enrichment and encouragement for all of us thank you very much once again the rich indian tradition teaches us that a guest is like a deity and nothing could be more elating for a host if the guest is gentle wise scholarly yet very humble may i request dr pratibha mukherjee sahukar to present before us the bio note of our guest of honor today professor kirti tiwari it's over to you ma'am Uh, uh, ma'am could you please unmute yourself can now you can hear me it's a great honor for me yes. to speak about dr kirti tiwari before saying anything about her i would like to tell everyone present that she is my teacher as well she has taught me and with that i proceed to to speak about her dr kirti tiwari is the professor and head department of post graduate and research uh, studies at government jy chatisgarh college raipur she is the recipient of three gold medals for topping the merit list in college in pandit ravi shankar shukla university in ba part 1 and 3 and she is also the recipient of two gold medals for topping the merit list in college and pandit ravi shankar shukla university in ma english as well she is the faculty topper of pandit ravi shankar shukla university in the year 1982 and was awarded the national scholarship for ma dr kirti tiwari was awarded two years teachers fellowship by ugc for doctoral research and she was awarded her phd on the on confluence of death and uh, and advent in the novels of raja rao dr kirti tiwari has presented a number of research papers in national and international seminars and she has to her credit 11 research papers published in national and international research journals She is the founder of the research center and postgraduate library in the Department of English in Chhattisgarh College, and she is a recognized supervisor for Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University and Maths University Raipur. She has produced seven PhDs and at present guiding four candidates for the doctoral degree. Dr. Tiwari is the chairperson of Undergraduate Board of Studies of English Language and Literature. of for chatisgarh state and the chairperson of postgraduate board of studies for pandit ravi shankar shukla university as well she is the member of research committees academic councils and examination committees she is the member of the library committee of pandit ravi shankar shukla university professor tiwari is also a member of the research degree committee of pandit ravi shankar shukla university raipur she is also a member of the departmental research committee of the government college of the chatisgarh college raipur dr tiwari is the former member of planning and valuation board of pandit ravi shankar shukla university she is the pg counselor of ignu for mg0204 of ma english programs she has rendered professional services to psc vyapam ssc central jail and other organizations her specialization is british drama indian english indian writings in english and indian language and phonetics professor kirti tiwari very recently organized a national seminar on gandhian thought and culture she has delivered number of lectures in police academy raipur and the central jail raipur she was appointed convener of the committee on new education policy in the state of chhattisgarh She is at present the nodal state nodal officer, university nodal officer, and district nodal officer for English for prepa- preparing video lectures and graduate graduate courses of Chhattisgarh and Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University during the lockdown in April and May. She is also the state nodal officer for a for a library project 
of the Department of Higher Education in Chhattisgarh. Madam, we heartily welcome you and look forward to your deliberation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saoka. It's a matter of great pleasure and honor to be a part of this international webinar on COVID-19 and society organized by Durga Mahavidyalaya Raipur, my alma mater. I owe all my academic achievements to this college and uh, under the able guidance of principal, Professor Rakesh Tiwari, the Department of English has done a commendable job in choosing a subject which deals with one of the most pressing problems that our world is press, uh, facing today. The theme of the seminar is also in keeping with the spirit of or the guidelines of the new education policy which lays emphasis on interdisciplinary studies and research because it deals with so society as well as COVID. So, but uh, actually it is uh, pleasant to note that it is new but not very new. It is an added pleasure to have amongst us Professor Caroline Haysing from the State University of Iowa, USA, and Dr. Ram Sharma from Uttar Pradesh, India, as keynote speakers. I extend my warm greetings to all the keynote speaker, principal, all the faculties, and students, research scholars, and other participants who have joined from different corners of India and abroad. You know, as I said, that this key theme is very interesting. And in order to tackle a problem uh, like this, one has to go beyond the boundaries of geography, history, races, religion, and uh, so on. So I congratulate the principal and the convener, Dr. Pratibha Mukherjee Sahukar, for uh, organizing a seminar on such a relevant topic. And also, I would like to congratulate her team which includes the co-convener, Jeevan Sagar, and all the faculty members of the department and those who have directly and indirectly contributed to the success of it for their commitment to societal engagement. It is uh, interesting to note that uh, you know, this topic uh, is a, no, um, you know, uh, this topic is uh, uh, connected with, uh, you know, COVID and uh, uh, it has, uh, uh, it is interesting to note that the Department of English is organizing, but actually it is not surprising. It may be interesting, but not surprising because, uh, you know, literature has always been an expression of society. And uh, uh, I remember the words of Salman Rushdie who said, uh, literature to literature I go to explore the highest and lowest places in human society. So again, uh, we should be thankful to the Department of English for uh, taking up this theme and uh, which is uh, very uh, relevant and uh, uh, I remember another quotation from, uh, you know, a Yale professor, uh, Mr. Uh, Snowden, who said that the impact of epidemic diseases on society has shaped powerful social evolution, uh, no less than war, revolution, or economic crisis. So, 
this uh, seminar which uh, focuses on covid-19 and society uh, i'm sure is going to navigate the impact covid-19 has um, on society because it has affected it in a myriad ways and the pandemic you know uh, we have observed for the far past few months that how is that it has affected the society you must have noticed that the society has taken a complete u turn you know the living has come to basics the main focus is on survival if you remember the early months of this year in january of or february we would never have thought that particularly i could never have imagined that i can do without a newspaper in the morning with a cup of tea but for the past 5 months i haven't seen a hard copy of any newspaper or touched it i go for electronic versions because now the priorities have also shifted you know they have changed and there are two ways in which people are reacting to this situation some people they are have become very self centered and perhaps that is the need of the day then there are others who have become compassionate to their fellow beings and they are ready seeing the situation they are ready to uh, give any kind of help or contribution uh, for their fellow beings then another thing which is noticeable is how social relationships have been redefined similarly social norms are also redefined then children and adults they have become very techno savvy and previously we used to tell the children not to use mobiles or laptops and others but now we want them to sit and concentrate and uh, you know uh, use internet as well as uh, join the online classes so there is a big shift then the society uh, is no more global in the sense that previously we took pride and interest in going abroad but today because of various restrictions also and our preferences and our priorities have changed no one would like to go to foreign lands until and unless it is very very necessary so apart from that also you know uh, the people are not at all planning for any holidays outside their home or region uh, uh, even uh, for 2021 then interesting thing is although the situation is not so normal but people are adapting to the change and are ready to explore new ventures which they would otherwise fear to jump into we have we know that covid-19 has set the ball rolling for evolution in higher education particularly our teacher fraternity has experienced that how during the lock lockdown we struggle but we proved our worth we you know switched over to all these new technology and prepared video lectures at a time when we did not even have proper resources at home so we are ready in this situation because the stress focus is on survival we are ready to struggle and prove ourselves fit to survive then most people think that this crisis has potential to shake things up for better and i'm sure that 
This scenario has not only revealed our weaknesses and the challenges that are there in right in front of us, but it has also made us realize that what strengths we have and what opportunities we can grab. So I'm sure that this webinar, the international webinar, will provide perspectives which will help uh, the, the, us to understand the impact of coronavirus disease, that is COVID-19, on society by analyzing, or you can say doing a swap analysis sort of thing, and uh, would prepare us for a better future. I wish this webinar a grand success, and I would like to thank Dr. Pratibha Mukherjee, the convener, my favorite student, that she has given me an opportunity to share my views on this crisis that we have been compelled to combat from this platform. Thank you. Over to Pratibha. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, the honor is all mine to have your presence here. Thank you very much. Uh, what would you even please? Thank you very much, ma'am, for gracing us with your wise words. I must say, it's always a far cry to listen to you. With this, we proceed to the further notch of the program. The webinar is very privileged to have Professor Carolyn Haysing as the first speaker of the day. I would like to respectfully invite Dr. Dipali Sharma, ma'am, to introduce Professor Carolyn Haysing. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Jeevan. Good evening. A warm welcome to you all. It's an honor to have an eminent speaker amidst us, Professor Caroline Delaney Haysing, who received her BA in 1974 in applied physics from the University of California at San Diego and her MS in 1975 in nuclear engineering from Stanford University. She has been employed as a postdoctoral research associate from 1978 to 80 and assistant professor from 1980 to 1984 in nuclear engineering at the Mesquite Institute of Technology. She has been associate professor from 1984 to 1989 and professor from 1989 to 1993 of industrial engineering at Northeastern University. Haysing is currently a professor of industrial nuclear engineering at Lower State University. She's a member of Tau Beta Pi, the Society of Women Engineers, the American Nuclear Society, ANS, the Professional Women in ANS Committee, and in 1987, she received the Young Scholar Award from the American Association of University Women. She has obtained numerous grants and contracts and has presented and published over 200 papers. She currently teaches courses conducts research and reliability and risk analysis, quality control and management. Her interest in Indian philosophy, Indian culture is commendable. Welcome ma'am, you're cordially invited to share your views. Ma'am and thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And um, I, I'm very happy to join you today uh, and this evening to talk about COVID-19 and the impact on society. And the previous speakers have already talked about how we're very much impacted on an individual basis every day through social distancing and through the lockdowns that have happened and we have a uh, situation 
where we're looking into the future and we have a lot of uncertainty. Um, I was going to say that one of my fields of research is risk analysis and um, we are right now every day assessing the risk. So our previous speaker talked about not reading the newspaper anymore with her tea. She's doing her reading on her cell phone or on her laptop. And that's a risk assessment. So every day when we go outside, if we do go outside, we're wearing a mask. Some of us wear a face shield and we're assessing the risk. And um, so this is putting each of us in a situation where we have to think about what is important in our lives. And of course, our health and the health of our family members is a priority for many of us. So as we're looking into the future, of course, we're all looking at the possibility of a vaccine. And eventually, perhaps as early as the spring of 2021, there will be a vaccine or multiple vaccines available. Now, in addition to vaccines, there are therapeutic medicines and therapies being developed. And many of these look very promising. But at the very moment we're at right here on August 14th, 2020, the reality is that there are thousands of people around the world who are in intensive care units. They're fighting for their lives. And many of them are dying on mechanical respirators and they are dying alone. They're dying without their family members around them. And that is one of the most tragic aspects of this disease. Not only that, but the healthcare professionals, the doctors and the nurses and those in the hospitals are at great risk of contracting the disease themselves. And so there have been many doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals who've also lost their lives to COVID. Now, COVID-19 is not going to go away. It is here and it will remain here as a disease that the human race will have to deal with for many, many years. And in fact, any vaccine that is developed may require uh, additional vaccines every two to three months. It's not like when you go in once a year for a flu shot. This is not the seasonal flu. And so the vaccines themselves are going to be different and the frequency of which you will have to go in to take the vaccines could be quite frequent, like I'm saying, from every two to three months. Now, for those of us who are over the age of 60, the COVID-19 crisis creates a situation for those of us who are over 60 to be more careful because we are at higher risk. And people who have underlying health conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, if they're suffering from cancer, if they have heart disease, or if they're simply uh, overweight and have obesity, that puts that person at much higher risk of having a serious case of COVID-19. So in effect, 
we are setting up different age groups in our society with different risk perceptions of what COVID-19 means to them. And so we have young people who, let's say they're in college age between 18 to 22, who may feel that they are at lower risk but there are a certain percentage of even that age group that are succumbing. So it's not true that 18 to 22 year olds are immune from the disease. They are at lower risk of contracting a serious case and a lower risk of death, but they can contract the disease, become infected, and they can transmit the disease to older population. Now let's think about the university situation for a moment. In the United States right now, uh, our universities and colleges are in a big quandary. They're trying to figure out how they can operate this fall. Now at Iowa State University, the decision has been made to open the campus and allow the 35,000 students to return to a small college town, Ames, Iowa, where the population of the town is 50,000. And we have a uh, a situation where there will be 9,000 students living in dormitories. And those students have come to campus and they're being tested to see if they are carrying COVID-19. Out of the first 3,000 students that were tested, 66 tested positive, and 33 of those students were sent home. However, 33 students decided to stay on campus and live in a dormitory that is set up for COVID-19 uh, people who are infected. Now, as these tests continue, there will be more students that decide to go home to recover, and but there will be students who decide to remain and go in the dorm and wait for 14 days of quarantine to see if they can test negatively. So this is already happening in the last week. And on Monday, August 17th, the Iowa State University will officially reopen for the fall. Any large courses over 200 students will be online but there will be uh, classes opening where there will be social distancing and the students will sit six feet apart. Now in other universities in the US, they've decided to go online. And in my state of California, the California schools have decided to be online. And some of the major universities such as MIT and Harvard and Yale and Princeton, some of our most famous universities will be online this fall. And the students who are undergraduates will not be allowed on campus. So there's a variety of uh, decisions that have been made and for our K through 12 education, some states are saying, no, you cannot reopen the schools this fall. And others are saying, let's try it out. Now, so far, we've had a few schools reopen in the state of Georgia in the South, and it has not worked out. The uh, students, have been contracting the disease. And this means that the school needs to be shut down 
So we're having quite a crisis right now, just trying to make decisions about school reopenings. And many parents are very concerned, as you might expect. The parents are very concerned about the safety of their children going back to school. So I'm giving you kind of an update about what's going on in the United States. We have over 5 million confirmed cases. We have over 167,000 people dead. We have a rate of 1,000 deaths per day. And our epidemic is not over at all. And in some of our 50 states, we have an increase, especially in the states of Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, Mississippi, and Georgia, all of which are in the South and are the hottest climates. In the Northeast, in the New York area, and in New England, the epidemic is pretty much under control, but we have very much a variability across the entire country. Now in India, you also have a similar situation where initially your outbreaks were more or less around the city of Mumbai and in Delhi and affecting your bigger cities. And I have been told that in the villages of most of your states, COVID is only now coming in. So the majority of India's COVID cases have been in outbreaks in the uh, areas in Mumbai and some of the slum areas. And there are very high infection rates in those slum areas. Now in Rishikesh, where I spend a lot of my time when I visit India, a friend of mine who lives there has told me that in Rishikesh, which is up in the Himalayas in Uttarakhand, there is a uh, beginning to be more cases in the market areas, in the areas that are around the um, more populated areas. So the virus in India is growing at a very high rate. And so you in India uh, maybe are five to six weeks behind the United States. And you have a situation where the virus is increasing and the epidemic is increasing. Oh. So as far as the future and the impact on society of COVID-19, it obviously is impacting the world and, and India and every country, although there are some countries that have seemed to be able to keep the virus under control. And those tend to be um, uh, countries in uh, such as South Korea and Japan and some of the countries um, in Western Europe. But in Africa and Latin America, the virus is starting to take off, particularly in the African countries. And in many of the Latin American countries, and we know that Brazil has a very large epidemic. So as we look around the world, of course, the best minds are working on solutions, which include vaccinations. But in the meantime, what can we do to try to uh, keep ourselves and our family members healthy? That's where we can look at it, the impact of yoga on stress. And as a practitioner of yoga myself and of meditation 
and of uh, healthy living. Uh, this is something that is probably going to continue as people um, are trying to seek solutions in their own personal lives. And I also think that spirituality will also be growing uh, as people face daunting life and death challenges from the pandemic. And for myself as an individual, I do yoga meditation. I follow my guru Paramahansa Yogananda who began the Yogoda Satsanga Society of India in Bengal in Ranchi, Bihar with a school in 1916. And then he came to the US in 1920 as an invited speaker to the World Parliament Parliament of World Religions in Boston. And he spent 30 years in the US. He followed Swami Vivekananda who came in 1893 to the US. And there have been many gurus since that time who have come to the US and established yoga centers and ashrams and also our Indian American population, which is over 3 million. As you know, I can tell you that we're very proud to announce that our vice presidential candidate on the Democratic ticket is Kamala Devi Harris. She's a senator from California and her mother, Shaimala Gopalan, came from Chennai, known formally as Madras. And she is our first Indian American woman to be appointed vice president. And she will be running on the ticket with Joe Biden for president and vice president of the United States. Our election is November 3rd in 82 days. It is possible that Senator Kamala Harris will become the first Indian American to be at the level of government at the vice president level. So Indian Indians everywhere are very proud of that. And that just happened on Tuesday. Now, I think that as this pandemic continues, we will uh, have a vaccine eventually. There will be probably several vaccines and then it's going to take some time in 2021 to get everyone vaccinated. So Bill Gates, who's a well-known American philanthropist has and is involved in India with the Serum Institute of Pune in Maharashtra on vaccinations India is developing also believes that by the end of 2021, we will be able to have controlled COVID in the West. But in 2022, that year, it will take another year to try to control the virus in other parts of the world, especially Africa. So you are looking at a time horizon of at least another year to two years of us living this way. And we're now learning how to live in this way. Um, and as all of you know, it's a challenge. And so we hope that yoga and the role of India and the Indian philosophy, the Indian uh, vegetarian system of nutrition and Ayurveda will begin to expand. And that's been happening already before the pandemic. But now with the emphasis on health, you will see uh, yoga growing in the world. And I can tell you that it's through yoga that I personally 
manage my life every day during the pandemic. So I am very grateful to India for its great culture, for its incredible philosophy of life. And I look forward to returning to India, hopefully by the fall of 2021. And every day I uh, watch videos and uh, my consciousness goes to the Himalayas. And it's through all of my trips to India. I've been to India over 15 times. I've spent over three years in total in India, beginning in 2010, when I first visited Nasik with my student Akash Patel and other parts of India. And I believe that India has a special role to play in solving the problems around COVID-19. And I specifically am talking to Indian students that Indian students I've had over the years are some of the brightest people on the planet. And Indian students are going to be the ones who are going to figure all of this out. And I really believe that it's going to be Indians who lead the way in solving this problem. So thank you very much. And uh, I always am happy to be with all of you in India. Uh, I hope to visit your beautiful state and your city right here in the future. And yes. I'm thankful. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Professor Carolyn Hasing. It was very much enlightening. I must say that long back uh, when I visited my dictionary, I referred to my dictionary, I had read that experience is an abstract noun. But today I can very much say it's, a, uh, it's not an abstract noun. Uh, it has a name and a face. And it would be Professor Carolyn Hasing, it was really enlightening to hear to you. And uh, I have collected a few questions from the audience. With your permission, I would like to read them out to you. Okay, all right. Thank you. The very first question is from Ms. Annapurna Pawar. She would like to ask, how to cope up in such harassing situations? Uh, the second question is also by her, and it is in uh, it is a corollary to the first one. It is how to fight with mental breakdown in such situations. Over to you, ma'am. Okay, I'm trying to understand um, the first part of the question. Can you repeat that first part for me? It is how to cope up in such harassing situations. A COVID-19 has posed a kind of harassing situation oh. for all of us. Yes, well, how to cope? I think uh, following meditation practice where you are trying to control your thoughts. Now, I've been practicing meditation for over 20 years. And meditation is a, a technique that was developed primarily in India by all of your famous sages and gurus. And this is a way of calming the mind and controlling your thoughts. So I have always noticed when I had Indian students um, that Indians, Indian students seem to have more control over their emotions and over their, and they were one uh, concentrated on their studies in a way that most American students are not. And when I first went to India, I spent time with their families and I found out grandparents of India have a tremendous influence on their grandchildren. And I will never forget Akash Patel's parents bringing me to their yoga classes in the morning in Nasik. 
and I went with his grandmother who spoke no English and went with her. She would wake me up at like 5.30 a.m. and off we go. And we were with other grandmothers and we did laughing yoga. We did all kinds of exercises. Then we took a walk. And I would tell you, the person asking the question, do you have grandparents you can talk to? Because the grandparents of India know how to handle their lives and grandmothers of India know what food you should be eating <laughs> because I know with a cautious grandmother going out and also with Dr. Ron Sharma I should mention his family his mother lives with him I've stayed with his family his mother and his wife are cooking the best fresh vegetables they are always uh attending to the family's health. So for young Indians, I recommend that you go to your grandmothers and talk to them because they know most Indians have little temples in their house and the grandparents are very vigilant. They're still doing the yoga. They're still practicing that. But what I've noticed is the young Indians are not so much doing that. They've been going to the malls and they eat KFC, Pizza Hut, and McDonald's. And you know that isn't healthy food. It's fun food. You know, it's fun and, and you want to be modern. But you young Indians need to recall and you have the experts right in your own homes, your grandparents. So that's my answer. Listen to your grandmother and especially your grandmother who is knows how to uh, provide healthy food for you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, another question comes from Mr. Gaurav Sen Gupta. I would like to read it out to you. Of all the sectors, the education sector is badly hampered uh, it has almost reached a stagnant stage. As students, how do we reduce the risk of mental breakdown, keeping in mind the rising uncertain, uh, uncertainties? Oh. You know what? I do believe that COVID-19 has been sent to humanity at this time for a reason. And it is to make you young Indians and young people around the world realize that this is just one challenge. Humanity has always faced these challenges in the past. So mental breakdown is not an option. Your rishis, your gurus, your sages for thousands of years have developed yoga, have developed meditation. Go to your traditions. They India has, is the only culture in the world that has survived thousands and thousands of years in continuity. So think about how your ancestors dealt with every type of catastrophe, including the great flood of Manu 12,000 years ago. And India has an ancient culture that in the world is unique. And so if you follow your traditions, if you follow your gurus, Swami Vivekananda is an excellent role model. He's extremely famous. Look at his life. Did he ever, he had such mental fortitude and my guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, again, all of the great ones, Mahatma Gandhi, your great souls, your Mahatmas, your Paramahansas, you also have the answer to any kind of mental issues right there. And if you practice meditation, you will 
be able to control your mind and your thoughts. So young Indians need to return to their traditions. That's what I believe. And I also know that when my Indian students came from India, the very best of my Indian students were ones who were practicing their culture. And many of my most uh, successful Indian students, Ankit Singhal from Rajasthan is a good example. He started a Hindu yuva group on our campus with other students who were from II, he was from IIT Delhi, and we had students from IIT Mumbai who were practitioners of Vedic culture. And these were PhD students in electrical engineering, and they are were so impressive. I joined their Gita group. And a uh, Hindu Yuva has expanded and at Iowa State, they even have a house that they have purchased. And Hindu Yuba is expanding across America in many colleges. And it's the best of the best Indian students I've ever met in my life. And they are a testament to their parents and their grandparents. And I went and attended the wedding of Ankit Singhal in Jaipur. And I met his parents. I met his grandparents. I met all of his relatives. And I know that's the strength of Indian culture is your families. And I am so impressed every time I go to India with your grandparents. So stick with your grandparents and your grandparents will get you through it. They will be the ones. And remember Kamala Harris, who will become, I believe, the first vice president of the United States Indian American. She attributes her grandfather who fought in the Indian Freedom, he was an Indian freedom fighter. She attributes her grandfather with the person who inspired her to come to America and with her mother, through her mother who was a cancer researcher and through this line, the last name is Gopalan and on John Mashtami on Tuesday, it was John Mashtami Krishna's birthday, this announcement was made. And so I believe all of you Indians have a great heritage and there's no reason for you at all to be in mental distress. Just continue to talk to your parents, your grandparents, especially your grandparents, because the grandparents are the ones I've, I've seen in Indian families who are really continuing to practice the traditions. And the grandparents are going to be the ones that will get you through. That, that's what I believe. I mean, I've met too many wonderful grandparents, especially grandmothers of uh, my students. And they're the ones who got my students over to America and they're the ones who taught the values that make Indian students as powerful as you are, because you're all extremely smart. You may be the smartest people on the planet, because I had you in my classes. The Chinese are running second to you, but Indians are so smart that you are going to be the ones to solve this problem. I know it. And uh, I believe it. And I have incredible respect for all of you. Uh, 
Thank you very much, ma'am, for this beautiful uh, answer. I have got one more question. It's from Mr. Gajanan Nayak. It is, is COVID-19 really a pandemic or it's a media hype or projection? Your <laughs> views, ma'am. Oh, no, it's real. And, you know, my guru Paramahansa Yogananda, back in the 1950s, he went in Mahasamadhi in 1952. He predicted there was going to be a crisis in the future that would lead us into the golden age. And we don't know if this is the one, it might be. But clearly, this COVID-19 is real. It's not a hoax. It has been sent, and it's here to wake us up. It's here to uh, challenge us. And every day I wake up and I think, I say to my guru, I go, guru, you have, um, is this the crisis you're talking about? And many of our leaders in our organization feel it could be, we don't know for sure. It depends on how humanity reacts. And if we can get our act together, um, we will, you know, we will get through this. And I believe we will. But it is real. You can ask any medical doctor, uh, especially talk to someone from an emergency room because they'll tell you how deadly this disease is. It is not media hype at all. It is a very dangerous disease. And it's, you know, airborne. There's airborne transmission of it. So do not take this lightly. It is a real, real uh, pandemic. And... Um, you know, support your medical workers, your doctors and your nurses in your area. Um, so that's my answer. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I can see a raised hand in the chat box. Uh, I would like to invite Miss Monica Paniker, Paniker to uh, ask her question. Miss Monica okay. Paniker. Oh, actually, it is uh, Ravi Shankar Panikar Jeevan, sir. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, first, please, of all, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, our honorable speaker for this wonderful and revealing session. Uh, in fact, uh, there were certain things that when she was telling, uh, it was uh, like a revelation for us. Ma'am, I would like to ask a question. As a teacher and as a soft skill trainer, what is one thing that I can tell students during this pandemic time? Mm -hmm. Be well, one thing that you can tell them is, oh, Dr. Ram is there. <laughs> I think one thing you can tell them is that it's their responsibility to solve the problem. Because I think it's the youth of the world, especially the youth of India, with all the brains that you have, it's your responsibility to solve the problem. And Dr. Ram and I have given meditation or um, motivational talks around India about climate change. And we always tell the Indian students, look, you're the ones that will solve the problem because you are the smartest people on the planet and you're the young people of India and your grandparents are going to expect you to solve these problems. And your grandparents expect you to do it. So you will do it because I know Indian students always respect their elders. And I've had Indian students touch my feet Whenever Indian students are touching my feet, I bow down and touch their feet. And I can also tell you that Indians know what responsibility is. You do. You, you have been taught this. And of all people on the planet, you are the ones. So tell your students, you know, you as a teacher, 
know this yourself, that those students in your classrooms are very, very smart people and they will solve the problem. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much for patiently answering all these questions. This was the last question. And uh, hereafter, uh, I would like to take the program to its next segment. The next speaker of the day is Dr. Ram Sharma. And uh, he needs no introduction in the academic circle of language and literature. And he is a person of versatile talents. May I call upon Dr. Dipali Sharma, ma'am, to throw some light on the personality of Dr. Ram Sharma. Uh, Dr. Dipali Sharma, please. Thank you, Jeevan. Uh, very uh, well said that uh, Ram Sharma, sir, needs no introduction. But I think it is customary to introduce him to uh, our audience or participants. So the next speaker, the key speaker uh, with us is Dr. Ram Sharma, who is an accomplished poet and writer, both in English and Hindi, in the field of literature. He has added many feathers to his cap. He has been an exceptionally brilliant student. He did his doctorate on postmodernist trends in Indian novels in English, a study of Anita Desai, Arun Joshi, Amitav Ghosh, and Vikram Seth. He's a renowned poet, critic, reviewer, and translator. His poetry is indeed of very high order, which is read throughout the world. He has 85 research papers published in esteemed journals of India and abroad. Besides this, his works have appeared in web journals like Muse India, etc. His poems are showing presence in foreign e-journals also. He has to his credit eight poetry volumes. He has also contributed editing on 32 anthologies, books in English literature. He has attended more than 50 national and international seminars and presented his papers there. At present, he's working as associate professor and head of the department in English in JVPG College, Bharat, Bhagpat, UP. He's editor in chief of two international journals, Ruminations and Glimpses. We are honored to have a distinguished speaker like you, sir. You are cordially invited to share your views. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Dipali, ma'am. I sir. would like to thank um, Professor Pratibha Mukherjee for uh, accepting my idea of uh, organizing this international webinar on COVID-19 and society. I also welcome and thank you, Principal Sir, Professor Rakesh Tiwari Ji, and all the other distinguished professors and participants. This is really a tough time, a hard time for all of us. We know this COVID-19 is a short form of coronavirus disease, which started in Wuhan, China in December 19. And from there, I would like to inform you one more thing. From March, I am conducting so many international webinars with Professor Carolyn Heising, who is working for WHO, Bill Gates. We have studied so many papers on COVID-19, how it is growing, what are its main symptoms. We are going through it. And we are trying to help it, the participants or the society. We are giving them or we are trying to update them. Uh, you are very well aware that first COVID-19 was considered a respiratory disease. And uh, in the United States and in Italy, the doctors uh, tried for ventilators, which failed. Later on, Trump asked from India, hydroxychloroquine. I don't know how much it, it is working. Later on, plasma therapy, that also failed. And then another uh, medicine, Remdesivir. Carolyn, am I right? They, they brought another medicine, Remdesivir. I don't know how much it is working. Now we are hoping for vaccines. And there are more than 100 companies, they are making the vaccines. 
one day they are claiming that we have made the vaccine another day some other news is coming so i don't know how much you people can be hopeful about these vaccines and we even don't know what the root cause of corona virus we don't know so in my paper i would try to tell you the root cause and then i would tell you its effect on society so i would like to start my speech with the an article that was published in the guardian it was written by us biologist thomas lovejoy who is a professor of environment science at george mason university and he has given that uh, title to his paper it was intrusion into nature led to pandemic humne prakriti ka itna dohan kar liya itna shoshan kar liya uske karan ye bimari aayi इसके लिए कोई चाइना जिम्मेदार नहीं है कोई कोरोना वायरस जिम्मेदार नहीं है कोई गवर्नमेंट जिम्मेदार नहीं है हम सब लोग कहीं ना कहीं जिम्मेदार हैं, हमारी पीढ़ियां जिम्मेदार हैं, जिस तरह से हमने पर्यावरण का दोहन और शोषण किया हमारी तो वैदिक सभ्यता और संस्कृति क्या थी दे रेस्पेक्ट नेचर उन्होंने जो है प्रकृति को कभी भी दोहन और शोषण नहीं किया उनका कॉन्सेप्ट था सर्वे भवन तो सुखीन है कि सबसे पहली चीज क्या है पैसा कमाना नहीं है आपकी निरोगी काया है let all should be happy they have given this concept hamari rishi muniyo ne kya diya hame kisi bhi aap desh mein chale jaiye united i am talking to carolin in united states there are not so much flora and fauna there are not so much of seasonable vegetables seasonable fruits these are the hard work of our sages and saints they developed for us so that we be happy ki hum khush rahe swasth rahe isi mein i i would like to continue vast illegal wildlife trade and humanity's excessive intrusion into nature is to blame the corona virus pandemic if we i am from english literature so i would like to quote uh, the lines of william words for that world is too much with us you are very well know is written in 19th century the world is too much with us getting and spending we lay waste our powers little we see in nature that is ours हमने तो पूरा हृदय उड़ेल के रख दिया है कि हमारे तो दो ही गतिविधियां हम जानते हैं पैसा कमाना और पैसा खर्च करना तीसरी चीज हम जानते ही नहीं तो हम किस हम क्या क्या आशा करें हम क्या किसको दोष दें इसी में आई वुड लाइक टू कंटिन्यू विद द सेम आर्टिकल ह्यूमैनिटी विल बी फिनिश्ड इफ वी फेल टू ड्रास्टिकली चेंज आवर फूड सिस्टम इन रेस्पॉन्स टू द कोरोना वायरस पेंडेमिक एंड द क्लाइमेट क्राइसिस द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट नेचुरलिस्ट Jain Goodall has warned in the Guardian. In a Guardian, Jain Goodall has also written one article, and she blamed the emergence of COVID-19 on the over-exploitation of the natural world, which has seen forests cut down, species made extinct, and natural habitats destroyed. I am quoting from her: "We have brought this on ourselves because of our absolute disrespect for animals and the environment." our disrespect for wild animals and our disrespect for the farmed animals has created this situation where disease can spill over to infect human beings if we do not do things differently we are all finished we can't go on very much longer like this unquote i don't know how many of you will believe on these sentences but this is a clear warning and this is not the first virus previously we have seen Zika virus, swine flu, HIV. These viruses came on coming, and we are just keep on sleeping that everything is all right. This is not just happening now; it's happening from I think three, four decades. These viruses are coming. People called for people to be lifted out from this thinking. They have to think about the environment. The wealthy should put pressure on the leaders and take care on what they buy to avoid adding to the problem. we have got to stop buying their products of companies that i would say we are not just the unpaid employees of these corporations they tell you eat this eat this medicine take that vaccine we are not the un, we are just working unpaid employees of this corporation carolin has warned us which models we are applying even if you go through what lord mekale has written in 1835 in his minutes that i am quoting from lord mekale i have traveled extensively in india 
its culture is so much diversified and rich i have never met a person which is thug a thief or a cheat until or unless we break its culture we are not able to rule here unquote so that concept is still going on they are breaking us into religions into caste into regionalism into superiorities inferiority into universities into colleges so we have to rise this we have to uh, wake ourselves up we have to create the awareness lord mekale ne aage bhi kaha hai ki hum yahan ek aisi shiksha leke aayenge aur usse ek aise work ka nirman hoga jo bhartiya sabhyata aur sanskriti ko he drishti se dekhega aur western culture aur models pe garv karega ki usne follow kiya so carolyn is the example what she has warned warned us is absolutely true uh, i would like to quote you other magazines scientists warned worst pandemic are on the way if we don't protect nature covid 19 se stop nahi hoga vaccine aa jayega to ye koi samadhan nahi hai aage fir koi aur virus aayega uske liye fir aur koi vaccine ka intezar kiya jayega uh, i have read an article in this magazine eco watch future pandemics are on the horizon if mankind does not stop it i am quoting from it there is single species that is responsible for covid 19 pandemic is us ourselves human beings as with the climate and biodiversity crisis recent pandemics are a direct consequence of human activity particularly our global financial and economic systems based on a limited paradigms that prizes economic growth at any cost economic growth at any cost we have a small window of opportunity in overcoming the challenges of the current crisis to avoid sowing the seeds of future ones report on biodiversity and ecosystem 1 million species of plants and animals are at risk of extinction within decades no one is talking government needs to sustainable and nature positive initiatives greed for allowing microbes that lead to novel diseases to jump from animals to humans it's the time to relax environmental standards and to prop up industries such as extensive agriculture long distance transportation rampant deforestation uncontrolled expansion of agriculture mining such was the thing that exploited the nature in such a way that we are on a periphery that we have just exploited nature we just think that nature is just to give we don't think that is our responsibility to give to nature in in its return we never think that 1.7 million unidentified viruses known to infect people are estimated to exist in mammals and water birds any of these may be more disruptive and lethal than covid 19 is not just covid 19 there are more viruses that can be more lethal countries should stand on environmental regulations adopt one health approach there are so many policies came and went so many are summits and we just keep on listening some saying there is no global warming even your president trump has no don't think that there is no global warming or greenhouse effect human impingement on natural habitat biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation are making virus ill spill over events such more likely another critic is a ecologist jo chim spangenberg is a vice president of sustainable europe research institute i am quoting from him we are creating this situation not the animals we are creating this situation not the animals by disrupting ecosystem we have created this condition as people move further into the territories of wild animals to clear forest raise livestock hunt and extract resources we are increasingly exposed to the pathogens that normally never leave these places and the bodies they inhabited previously we have seen such viruses like zika hiv aids swine flu ebola examples of the emergence of nepa virus in malaysia in the late 1990s uh, where deforestation drove fruit bats from their habitats to the mango trees and from mango trees to the animals and from animals to the human beings this this is the example of uh, nepa virus wet markets incubator for the emergence of infectious diseases 
there is a strong possibility SARC COVID-2 emerge at wet market in Wuhan, China. Spangenberg says the strict regulations for live animal markets, we, I'm quoting from him, we are part of nature, we are part of the ecosystem where our health is, our health is linked to the health of wildlife and the health of the environment. Rising temperatures and damaging corals in Australia and intense cyclones and warm water has caused extensive damage in recent years. Everywhere we are seeing, we are just not only exploiting nature, we are damaging, we are trying to damage it. Many people understand and support emotional responses from scientists to what they study happening in the environment. Others dismiss it as being overly sensitive Preventing global warming and environmental degradation. According to CNN, not only COVID-19, we are facing other problems. The Earth and its habitants face three global crises, the pandemic crisis, the climate crisis, and biodiversity crisis. We are not, not only facing this pandemic, we are facing other two crises at the same time. The massive global challenges, the destructive relationship between humanity and the natural world. Climate economist Gernard Wagner has linked the pandemic to climate change. Scientists use the term zoonosis referred to infectious diseases like COVID-19 that spread from animals to human beings. People continue to place increasing pressure on the Earth's remaining biodiversity activities uh, we keep on doing like that activities, though we are, they are having so many Geneva conventions, our summits, but there's no effect. Scientists say environmental damages is a war crime. They are saying it should be a war crime. Two dozen prominent scientists from around the world have asked the UN to make environmental damage a war crime. Existing Geneva convention, I don't know how much it is helpful or effective. The impact of armed conflicts are causing additional pressure on the environment. There are still so many tensions are going on from one country to another. Some scientists, they are saying that if we, we are destroying the nature, it should be called ecocide. I don't know how much uh, these um, uh, governments are going to help these things. I am really doubtful, but these things are going on. These are the root causes and the four um, there was a question, I think, from Dr. R.D. and D.R. Chandra that how can we live long? Then we have to improve our immune system. And it, how it can be improved? Our Ayush ministry has advised drinking warm water, doing pranayama, species like turmeric, cumin, jeera, coriander, tulsi, dalchini, black pepper, dry ginger, raisin, jaggery, fresh lemon juice, vitamin C intake. We should try to take all these things. Carolyn post upon doing pranayama and yoga. She is not uh, forcing her own Western models. She is telling our Eastern models that we should follow. So there are so many things. Uh, our culture has given such concepts. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhine. We respected nature and has given such mantras like Om Santi, Prathvi Deva Santi, Deva Banaspatiya Santi, Banaspati Mevi Santi Ho, Sare Sansar Me Santi Ho. Even the Senate in the United States started with the Gayatri Mantra recently, this is a recent development. So the, well, the, there's a cultural shift is going on. The West, Western people, they are trying to adopt our Eastern philosophy and they are looking towards India for a hope and it's irony and we, we people from India, they are looking towards the West and thinking that there might be more vaccines in six months or uh, maybe in a year or two years. And here is 1.3 billion people, how much time it will take to, I think, uh, to reach every people. Its effect is less individualism. Uh, I'm just trying to discuss few uh, of the effects of COVID-19 on the society. Uh, so society is becoming uh, hyper individualistic, more cruel, more selfish as the time progresses. It's going to happen. Eric Klinberg, professor of sociology, director of the Institute for Public Knowledge at New York University. The coronavirus pandemic marks the end of our romance with market society and hyper-individualism. He's saying uh, about hyper-individualism. Uh, 
the market based models for social organizations they are failing the economy will collapse if government doesn't help reduce or cancel their student debt doesn't guarantee income will increase in this corona crisis it will force us to reconsider who we are and what we value in longer version it could help us rediscover the better version of ourselves it may be our inner journey who we are that that thing can happen contemplative uh, policies may gain and we can try to look back who wish things can help us the epidemic can reveal deadly flaws in the healthcare system people are finding new ways to connect and support each other in adversity moving to our lives online we are talking everything about online we are talking there is also online medical health or online classes but i do i am really skeptical about this online if there is any natural calamity just like a storm or earthquake there will be no online and then what will happen then so i think we should start thinking about it so from now working efficiently at uh, efficiently at home we are working the power of talk in digital is opening for stronger family care we are remaining at home government becoming big pharma science reigns again uh, revive trust in institutions and values electronic voting or email voting restrain on mass consumption culture a stronger domestic supply chain these things are going uh, to happen i would uh, i would discuss these things in detail but i think as a paucity of time uh, i would like to quote from this book holistic healing its first paragraph will tell you the truth I, this book is written by swami rama this first paragraph our modern civilization claims to be very productive creative and resourceful but a hundred years ago we did not have many of the diseases that exist today every day more diseases are being created for although we are alive the majority of us experience only the art of existing very few of us have really cultivated that technique which is called the art of living the reason for this is that life today has becoming become very artificial man never stops to consider that he may have gone too far by ignoring his natural resources and by depending on artificial means living by artificial means gradually decreases natural resistance and this obsession makes modern man suffer more and more man's whole life seems to be kept busy in trying to get rid of self created suffering is there nothing higher for human beings to obtain than freedom from these elements so is a question for all of us how can we come out of this web this web we have created ourselves we have to prove that we are not the unpaid employees of these corporations on the one hand they are making the ros on the other hand they are making the drug of the calcium so we have to come out of these things we have not to take these things for granted Uh, I would like to read few of my Hindi poems. A Hindi ki मैंने कविता लिखी थी. शायद ये प्रगति के बारे में और आपको मालूम भी हो कि ये प्रगति क्या है. प्रगति एक छलावा भी कुछ दिन पूर्व मैंने ये कविता लिखी है. जीने की चाह में हम कहाँ से कहाँ तक चले गए? सोचा तो था जीवन का आरंभ पर यहाँ तो हर पल चले गए. हमने सहा है और पाया है. जीवन है बहु वह केवल छलावा आंकड़ों का डाटा वी कीप ऑन कलेक्टिंग डाटा प्रूविंग आवर सेल्स सुपीरियर वी आर सुपीरियर एंड दिस इज दिचुएशन वी आर लॉक डाउन इन आवर हाउसेस एंड एनिमल्स आर जस्ट लाफिंग ऑन अस यू पीपल यू ह्यूमन बींग्स यू हैव प्रोग्रेस सो मच एंड वी वी एनिमल्स रिमेन वी आर वी आर एंड वी आर मोर सेफ ये केवल है छलावा आंकड़ों का समझने में ही हमसे कुछ भूल हुई है वास्तविक प्रगति अब भी मानव से बहुत दूर है जीवन थोड़ा है पर काम बहुत अब ऐसे में आराम कहाँ चलने का नाम है जिंदगी रुकने का फिर काम कहाँ आओ बैठे नदी किनारे गीत पुराने फिर दोहराए प्रकृति की स्वप्निल नगरी में मन के सोए तार जगाए एक और कविता हिंदी की पढ़ना चाहूंगा कोरोना और भारत ये आप सभी को आप देख ही रहे हैं कि भारत दसवें स्थान से कैसे पहले स्थान की तरफ कितनी तेजी से जा रहा है कितने केसेज रोज आ रहे हैं अब लोगों ने चर्चा करने ही बंद कर दिया कैरोलिन हैज कॉल्ड दिस वायरस इज वेरी मच रियल आई आल्सो एक्सेप्ट दैट दिस वायरस इज वेरी मच रियल अब हमें क्या करना है ये मैंने कविता लिखी थी कोरोना और भारत 
ये पढ़ना चाहूंगा मैं रोज रोज रहा हूं पढ़ एम आई ओडिबल Yes, रोज 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 रहा हूं पढ़ कि कोरोना हारेगा भारत में परंतु हार तो रही है मानवता हर चौराहों गलियों में देख रहा हूं रोज मानवता के स्तंभ को गिरते हुए रोज देख रहे हैं हम किसी की डेथ हो रही है कोई एक्सीडेंट हो रहा है कोई गरीब मजदूर मारे जा रहे हैं और हम घरों में बैठे सोच रहे हैं कि हम तो सुरक्षित है हमारा क्या होगा यही तो यक्ष पर्सन है जो जिसने युधिष्ठिर से पूछा था कि संसार का सबसे बड़ा आश्चर्य क्या है ये वही आश्चर्य है तो स्त्री ने जवाब दिया था कि रोज हम देखते हैं कि हजारों व्यक्ति काल के गाल में जा रहे हैं रोज व्यक्ति मर रहे हैं और हम सोचते हैं कि हम नहीं मरेंगे हम सुरक्षित हैं हम स्वस्थ हैं अगले दिन ही अगर हमें कुछ हो जाता है खांसी जुखाम तो हम अपने आप को पाते हैं कि अरे हम तो कुछ भी नहीं इस ट्राई टू बैलेंस योर लाइफ रोज रोज रहा हूं पढ़ की कोरोना हारेगा भारत में परंतु हार तो रही है मानवता हर चोराहू गलियों में देख रहा हूँ रोज मानवता के स्तंभ को गिरते हुए ऐसा है मानव को इधर से उधर भागते हुए कैसी है ये बीमारी मानव से मानव हो गया है जुदा आज आदमी को आदमी भाग रहा है देखिए प्रकृति का कह बरस रहा है चारों ओर ऐसा लगता है प्रकृति यह कह रही पहले तुमने मुझे जुदा किया अब मैं करूंगी तुम्हें जुदा प्रकृति मैं ही हूं प्रकृति चाहे तू कहीं भी ले छुप चाहे तू कहीं भी ले ले एकांतवास मैं पहुंच जाऊंगी वहां भी मैं जरा सा हिलूंगी और सैलाब आ जाएगा अभी भी समय है मानव कर ले तू अपनी भूलों का पश्चाताप ले ले शरण तू प्रकृति की गोद में सौंप दे तू अपने आप को प्रकृति को एक दुलारे बच्चे की तरह अब वो ही तेरी रक्षा करेगी अब वो ही तेरी रक्षा करेगी आज आप गाँव में जाके देखिए वहां कोविड नाइन्टीन का इतना ज्यादा असर नहीं है आज गाँव में लोग वो प्रसन्नता से रह रहे हैं प्रकृति के साथ रह रहे हैं उनके पास कोई जॉब नहीं है खोने के लिए उनके पास प्रकृति है उन्हें बचाने के लिए उनका भरण पोषण करने के लिए ये बड़े बड़े शहर जब हमारे मजदूरों को शरण नहीं दे पाए वो भी गांव की तरफ लौटे और आज गांव ही उनकी रक्षा कर रहे हैं तो हमें ये देखना है विच मॉडल्स वी क्यूप ऑन फॉलोइंग टिल नाउ अभी मैं एक बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग इंसिडेंट आपके सामने प्रस्तुत करना चाहूँगा बताना चाहूँगा 2016 में स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी में मैं एक सेमिनार के संबंध में गया हुआ था कैरोलिन भी थी मेरे साथ तो वहीं पे एक मैंने बैनर देखा स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी में कि दे आर ट्राइंग टू डेवलप इकोलॉजिकल विलेजेस मुझे भी जिज्ञासा हुई कि इकोलॉजिकल विलेजेस स्टैनफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी डेवलप कर रही है क्यों ना जाके देखा जाए और मैं आपको बताऊँ आपको हंसी आएगी वो इकोलॉजिकल विलेजेस थे मिट्टी की दीवारें छप्पर लकड़ी का बने हुए थे वही जो हमें सपेरों का देश कह के हमारे से भुला दिए गए थे वो आज दोबारा हमारे ऊपर थोपे जाएंगे आज हमारा नीम को भी पेटेंट कर लिया गया है हल्दी को भी पेटेंट कर लिया गया है क्या नीम हल्दी फिटकरी कपूर इनसे बड़ा कोई सैनिटाइजर है नहीं है नीम से बड़ा तो कोई सैनिटाइजर है ही नहीं और हम जो आशा कर रहे हैं कि हम दुकान से एक सैनिटाइजर खरीद के लाएंगे हाथ धोएंगे और हमारा जो विषाणु है वो मर जाएगा विषाणु वायरस के बारे में सुना था मैंने पढ़ा भी है कि वायरस हैज टू प्रॉपर्टीज इफ इट इज आउटसाइड इट इज नॉन लिविंग अगर ये बाहर है तो इसकी इस प्रॉपर्टी नॉन लिविंग की है अरे भाई जब ये बाहर नॉन लिविंग है तो ये सैनिटाइज से कैसे मर सकता एक सैनिटाइजर इसे कैसे किल कर सकता है अगर ये नॉन लिविंग है और इफ इट्स एंटर्स इन योर बॉडी इट स्टार्ट बिहेविंग लाइक ए लिविंग बींग तो क्या है आज एन मास्क को खराब बताया जा रहा है कल सैनिटाइजर को बता दिया जाएगा कि आपको कैंसर हो गया कैंसर की खोजी है दवा कैंसर का इलाज करिए आज ऑनलाइन की बात हो रही है कल ये बता दिया जाएगा कि इससे आपको जो है मेंटल इलनेस हो गई उसका इलाज करिए उसकी दवाई आप लेते रहिए यू जस्ट बिहेव जस्ट लाइक अनपेड एम्प्लॉय जैसा वो कहते रहे आप करते रहिए ये मैं नहीं कह रहा हूँ कि आप ना करें आप मास्क यूज ना करें सैनिटाइज यूज ना करें मेरा सिर्फ ये है कि आप अपने आप को भी जगाए अपनी जो है सारी सुरक्षा भी करें हमारी जो सनातन सभ्यता संस्कृति है उसको भी आप एडोप्ट करें एक बैलेंस बनाए हवन और यज्ञ से बड़ा कोई सैनिटाइज मैं नहीं मानता कि जो वातावरण को शुद्ध कर सकता है हमारे ऋषि मुनियों ने जो है हवन और यज्ञ की जो परिकल्पना की थी उसमें जो आम की लकड़ी और पेड़ों की पत्तियां और गाय का घी जो प्रयुक्त होता था उससे वातावरण शुद्ध होता था आज उसकी कोई चर्चा नहीं कर रहा है कपूर की कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है नीम की कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है फिटकरी की कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है तो यही है कि आप वो भी प्रयोग करें लेकिन इसका भी आप बराबर प्रयोग कर सकते हैं 
यही आपका आत्मनिर्भर भारत बनने की दिशा में आपको अपने आप को जगाना पड़ेगा अपने आप को आपको क्या है सोचना पड़ेगा अभी मैं आपको कोट करना चाहूंगा दया माता ये मेरे एक मित्र हैं यूएस के सुंदरम ला पियर उन्होंने पुस्तक लिखी है वी आर सोल ड्रीम गोट तो इसमें दया माता है एस आर एफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन फेलोशिप की हेड रही वो परामंश योगानंदा के बाद उन्होंने क्या लिखा है देखिए कितना कॉन्फिडेंस है उनके अंदर ओ इंडिया हाउ आई लव यू ओ इंडिया हाउ आई लव यू वाट मिस्टीरियस फोर्स इन योर कॉल्स फोर्थ माई लव यू आर नॉट ऑलवेज क्लीन यू आर नॉट ऑलवेज क्लीन आउटवर्डली योर क्लाइमेट इज नॉट द बेस्ट योर हीट इज अनबियरेबल Your rains are miserable, uncomfortable. Your creatures' confronts are nil as compared with the West. Your creature comforts are nil as compared to the West. But you have towering spiritual strength, and there is the tenderness of the mother in you as you welcome all, all visitors to your source. Your imperishable greatness has been best expressed in the lives of your saints. तो शायद यही वर्ड्स यही लाइंस आपको कोरोना से लड़ने के लिए जागृत करने के लिए काफी होंगे आई वॉज टॉकिंग टू माई फ्रेंड फ्रॉम ग्रीस हर नेम इज एड्रियाना और मैं उनसे बात कर रहा था कि भारत में बहुत हालात खराब होते जा रहे हैं कोरोना बहुत खराब स्थिति में पहुंच रहा है तो एड्रियाना जो एक रेडियोलॉजिस्ट है ग्रीस में वही ग्रीस जिससे अलेक्जेंडर द ग्रेट निकला था भारत और विश्व विजय के लिए और भारत से वो किस तरह पराजित होकर यहाँ के साधु सन्यासियों को अपने साथ लेके गया था और उसके सोचने का ढंग बदल गया था और उसके लास्ट वर्ड भी आपको याद होंगे वो एड्रियाना कहती है कि भारतवर्ष और कोरोना से हार जाए मैं कभी नहीं सोच सकती ये वही ये वही विश्वास है हमारी सभ्यता और संस्कृति पर कि वो कभी इस कोरोना से पराजित नहीं हो सकती है अगर ये हम कोरोना से हारेंगे तो ये होगा हमने वेस्ट मॉडल्स वी अडोप्टेड वेस्ट मॉडल्स वेस्ट मॉडल्स हारेंगे और हार रहे हैं वेस्टर्न मॉडल्स हैव कोलैप्स इन इटली वेस्टर्न मॉडल्स हैव कोलैप्स इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स सो इस वी हैव सीन इट ऑल ओवर हमें वी हैव टू क्रिएट अ बिगर बिलीफ इन आवर ओन कल्चर दैट वी कैन नॉट बी डिफीटेड बाय दिस टाइनी इनविजिबल कोविड-19 आप सभी के फेसेस पे मैं स्माइल चाहूंगा ये मेरा पोएट्री वॉल्यूम है लैंप ऑफ लव इससे मैं एक कविता जरूर आपके सामने प्रस्तुत करना चाहूंगा टाइटल ऑफ दिस पोएम इज वर्ल्ड विल चेंज विद योर लाव कि आपके मुस्कुराने से संसार को देखने का आपका नजरिया बदल जाएगा और संसार का भी नजरिया बदल जाएगा जब वो आपकी मुस्कुराहट को देखेगा द वर्ल्ड विल चेंज विद योर लाव द डार्क नाइट विल डिस विद इन ए क्लिटरिंग डान द वर्ल्ड विल चेंज विद योर लाव ओपन ऑल योर आईज विद पॉजिटिविटी the ferocious stone will change into a cool breeze the flowers of feeling will open and blossom the vines of love will ever grow strong consciousness of prayer shines upon the darkness of night the dark night is छोटी सी स्टोरी मैं आपको जरूर बताना चाहूंगा दो व्यक्ति रात के समय सोए हुए थे बराबर बराबर में एक व्यक्ति को लगता है कि उसे किसी चीज ने काटा है उसे काटा था सांप ने वो जैसे ही उठ के बैठता है तो उसे लगता है एक चूहा जा रहा है तो वो सोचता है कि अरे मुझे तो चूहे ने काटा है मुझे क्या होगा वो दोबारा व्यक्ति सो जाता है जिस व्यक्ति को सांप ने काटा था उसने चूहे को देखा जाते हुए तभी थोड़ी देर बाद एक व्यक्ति और उठता है उसे भी लगता है किसी चीज ने काटा है उसे चूहे ने काटा था जैसे ही उठ के बैठता है वो सांप को देखता है जिग जैग जाते हुए एकदम उसे जो है झटका लगता है और वो सोचता है अरे मुझे तो सांप ने काट लिया मैं नहीं बचूंगा एंड ही डाइड ऑफ हार्ट अटैक नाइन्टी परसेंट डेथ जो स्नेक बाइट की होती है ये सर्वे है वो हार्ट अटैक से होती है तो जिस व्यक्ति को चूहे ने काटा था वो मर गया और जिस व्यक्ति को सांप ने काटा था वो बच गया दिस डिपेंड्स ऑफ ऑन आवर करेज आवर स्ट्रेंथ 
कि हमें अपने अंदर ये साहस जगाना है कि अगर इवन इफ वी हैव बिकम कोविड पॉजिटिव वी विल रिमेन पॉजिटिव वी विल नॉट लूज आवर स्ट्रेंथ हमें ये कोविड कुछ नहीं हमारा बिगाड़ पाएगा इसी आशा से आप लोगों ने मुझे पेशेंटली सुना आपका ये लंच टाइम भी होगा कुछ लोग खाने के लिए आतुर होंगे अपना डिनर थैंक यू वेरी मच और वी आई कीप ऑन डूइंग दिस टाइप्स ऑफ वेबिनार्स फ्रॉम द लास्ट थ्री मंथ्स एंड आई होप मेरी आशा है कि जब तक हम इस समस्या से बाहर ना निकल जाएं इसी तरह के हम इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार्स गेट टूगेदर करते रहें एक दूसरे को एनकरेज करते रहें एक दूसरे का साहस बढ़ाते रहें नई नई जानकारी से भी अपडेट होती रहें I would like to thank Professor Caroline Heising. She has been with us from the last three months. She is studying WHO sites, Bill Gates articles, The Guardian, and so many other newspapers in United States. And she is giving us the information. India, you wake up. She is giving us a wake up call. India, you wake up. I would like to thank Professor uh, Sahukar ji, Dr. Uh, डॉक्टर आर के तिवारी जी प्रिंसिपल एंड देर आर अदर सो मेनी नेम्स डॉक्टर दीपाली शर्मा डॉक्टर संयुक्ता रोए एंड देर आर जीवन सागर जी सो मेनी नेम्स ऑन माय डॉक्टर अजय शर्मा जी डॉक्टर गिरिजा शंकर डॉक्टर पांडे पूर्णिमा शुक्ला जी आई थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू वेरी मच इस धैर्य से आपने मुझे सुना दिस इज ए कलेक्टिव फाइट मैं अकेला कुछ नहीं कर पाऊंगा हम सभी को ये लड़ाई लड़नी है और अपने आप को अनपेड एम्प्लॉयज हमें नहीं सिद्ध करना है इस जाल से हमें अपने आप को बचाना भी है सुरक्षित भी रखना है और हम ये प्रयास करते रहेंगे हमें आशा है कि हम और ज्यादा अपने आप को सुरक्षित और प्रसन्न महसूस करेंगे नमस्कार थैंक यू सर इट वाज इंडीड एन इनसाइटफुल सेशन आई मस्ट से दैट इट वाज वर्थ अटेंडिंग इट योर एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड योर शेयरिंग has given a ray of hope amidst uncertainties i must thank you from the core of my heart and i would like to lead this session to the question answer session yeah. all right so the very first question is from miss reeta soni ji it is is return back to nature the answer to this crisis exactly even our romantic poets they have written every poem on nature and they they warned us that we should return to nature w v yeats has warned us i am a man of literature so i would like to quote from there even examples star animals ab aap dekhi hamare upar to covid 19 ka asar hai hum gharon mein band hai hamare animals pe to koi asar nahi jo prakriti ki god mein reh rahe hain unke upar covid 19 ka kyu asar nahi hai kyunki unka immune system prakriti se bana hai abhi aap dekhiye ek word hai bhagwan भगवान कोई मूर्त रूप नहीं है वैसे भूमि वैसे वायु गगन नीर से इन सब चीजों से बन के बना है वर्ड और भगवान क्या है नेचर और नेचर क्या है जो हमेशा देती है इज द गिवर इज द डोनर तो क्या हमें प्रकृति माता हमारी रक्षा नहीं करेगी बिल्कुल करेगी प्रकृति की गोद में ही हम पले बढ़े हैं हमारा विकास प्रकृति में ही हुआ है और प्रकृति ही हमें बचाए थैंक यू सर आई वुड लाइक टू टेक द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इट इज फ्रॉम मिस्टर पार्थोजीत घोष ही वुड लाइक टू आस्क व्हाट इज योर टेक ऑन द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ कोविड और पोस्ट कोविड ह्यूमैनिटी फ्रॉम लिटरली पॉइंट लिटरली पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एक्चुअली सर आई विल टेल यू देयर इज नो पोस्ट कोविड अभी तो ये प्री कोविड से हम बाहर नहीं निकल पा रहे पोस्ट कोविड कब होगा अभी हम हम नहीं जानते प्री कोविड से ही हम अपने आप को सुरक्षित रखें अपने आप को स्वस्थ रखें अपना इम्यून पावर बना के रखें और दूसरी चीज मैं देख रहा हूँ लोग बहुत ज्यादा इरिटेटिंग हो रहे हैं जरा जरा सी बात ऑनलाइन ज्यादा क्लासेस कर रहे हैं उन्हें अपना भविष्य नजर नहीं आ रहा है तो ये सब चीजें हमें खुद ही हैंडल करनी पड़ेंगी एज कैरिंग वी हैव टू सो दर्ल्ड दैट वी आर द विश्व गुरु और वर्ल्ड लीडर वी आर द लाइट ऑफ द प्लानिट सो देर इज नो पोस्ट कोविड It is pre-COVID only. Okay. इससे पता नहीं कब होगा वो post-COVID. Yes. Sir. Thank you very much. जी. Then I would like to take uh, next question from Miss Kiran Malhotra. जी. Uh, her question reads like this. Sir, my question: Do you think that this uh, 
think an awareness will be created and we human beings understand our responsibility which you said there is there is a personal uh, awareness there is a quote in english ki kal tak to main duniya ko badalna chahta tha aaj main itna hoshiyar ho gaya hu ki maine apne aap ko badal liya hai to ye hame ye badlav the change starts from myself mere se start hota hai change agar main aaj chahun ki samaj badal jaye to nahi badlega my life will be my message yeah it echoes with the spirit of mahatma gandhi like uh, be the change to see the change all right uh, i would like to take the last question it is from mr sanjay baro sir due to pandemic covid 19 students are mostly uh, dealing with mobile phones because of online classes but if this practice uh, goes on in future uh, continuously is it good or bad for our academic scenario yeah is bad hum zyada online pe vishwas nahi kar sakte abhi dekhiye main aapke samne bol raha hu mera jo hai network unstable ho jata hai meri baat hi nahi pahunch payegi online mein students roz face kar rahe hain aur sabse badi baat hai aap dekhiye kitne students online aa pa rahe hain kitne students ke paas smartphones hai 4g connection hai unke paas और ये इसकी आप ये देखिए कितनी स्टेबिलिटी क्या है ऑनलाइन की अभी अगर तूफान आ जाए तो क्या ये डिस्टर्ब नहीं होगा क्या भूकंप आ जाए तो क्या ये डिस्टर्ब नहीं होगा क्या हम वहीं अपने आप को जमीन पे नहीं पाएंगे कि हमारे साथ ये ऑनलाइन जिसपे हमने इतनी पूरी एक कॉन्सेप्ट बना दी है सारी ऑनलाइन बिजनेस और ऑनलाइन क्लासेज और ऑनलाइन पता नहीं क्या क्या ऑनलाइन गवर्नमेंट ऑनलाइन मीटिंग्स हम पाएंगे कि हम तो वो जीरो हो गए हम पहले से या हम जब भी मैनेजमेंट करेंगे वो डिजास्टर जब वो चीजें होंगी या अभी से हम कुछ प्रयास करें दूसरा ये है कि मैं एक चीज और ऐड करना चाहूंगा सब लोगों का प्रश्न ये होगा कि हम क्या करें हम ना तो इतने लाखों पेड़ उगा सकते हैं एकदम एकदम हम क्या करें हमारा ये है कि हम प्रकृति को नष्ट ना करें मैंने तो एक यहाँ पे एक छोटी सा चीज शुरू की हुई है हमें एक ग्रुप बनाया हुआ है हमने बीस पच्चीस गमले लिए और उसमें थोड़ी थोड़ी सब्जियां हम उगा रहे हैं अपनी छतों पर उससे थोड़ी फ्रेश एयर भी हमें मिल रही है और जो है फ्रेश सब्जियां भी मिल रही है गार्डनिंग आप कर सकते हैं थोड़ा थोड़ा छोटा छोटा भगीरथ प्रयास आप करिए और ऐसा नहीं है कि आप प्रगति आप वो प्रकृति आपकी प्रगति में बाधा बनेगी ये प्रकृति ही आपको बचाएगी प्रकृति नेचर और ह्यूमन नेचर दे आर नॉट डिफरेंट हमारे अंदर क्या है ये पांच तत्व तो प्रकृति के दिए भी तो हैं फाइव एलिमेंट्स दैट इज नेचर और हम उसी पर विश्वास न करें वी आर वी आर होपिंग द वैक्सीन विल कम रशियन वैक्सीन हैज कम टूडे दे आर सींग द मेजर डॉक्टर्स आर अपोजिंग then say will say israeli vaccine has come then say oxford vaccine has come then serum vaccine has come chaliye maan liya aa bhi gaya 1.3 billion logo mein kitne saal lagenge lagane mein calculate kariye aur ek jagah lag gaya dusri jagah nahi laga to wo fir infected ho jayenge kitni billion doses aapko chahiye to ye person sabhi ke samne is pe aap sochiye for granted hum baith ke nahi reh sakte main to 3 mahine se soch raha hu un logo se vartalap kar raha hu kya chote chote prayas kariye तभी हम निकल पाएंगे इस ये कलेक्टिव एफर्ट ये कोई ऐसा नहीं है गवर्नमेंट हमारी कोई हेल्प कर देगी या हम जो है वैक्सीन हमें बचा लेगा या हमें कोई दवाई बचा लेगी इस चीज से बाहर निकलना पड़ेगा हमें अपने आप को जो आत्मनिर्भर भारत की जो बात कही गई है वो यही आत्मनिर्भर है अपने आप को बनाना है अभी तो मैं देखिए सब तरह की मैं तो अपनी दवाइयाँ ही रखता हूँ अब क्या दिखाऊँ मैं सब तरह की रखी हुई है मैंने तो कल अपने मित्र को मैंने ये भी बताई है तो यह सारी बताई है गिलो गिलो ही बताई है कि आप ये लीजिए अश्वगंधा आप लीजिए कपूर जलाइए सुबह शाम ये छोटे छोटे प्रयास है इन्हें करने पड़ेंगे मैं सिर्फ बता सकता हूँ प्रयास सभी को जागना पड़ेगा करना पड़ेगा तो थैंक यू वेरी मच अगेन फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू और यही मेरा प्रयास है कि आप लोग जागे आपके अंदर भारत सभ्यता संस्कृति और प्रकृति में बहुत सारी शक्ति है वो तो बचाएगी that was very interesting informative and enlightening uh, session sir and we are very much uh, grateful and deeply indebted to you for patiently answering all the questions of the audience and uh, here after we jump to the next segment of our webinar uh, with this we come to the final and very important segment of our program important in the sense this is the time of recalling all our takeaways and uh, being grateful to all those 
who have proved instrumental to make it happen successfully uh, i would like to give the baton to dr pratibha mukherjee sahukar again to take the webinar to its next segment over to you ma'am hello everybody i hope i am audible to all of you it was the, the session of today's international webinar was astonishingly beautiful i could see in the chat box uh, people uh, writing and uh, talking about the way man uh, carolyn was uh, talking about indian culture and uh, how uh, dr ram sharma uh, spoke about uh, uh, what should be and how we are um, i have a lot to say but uh, time does not permit me so now at the very end uh, it, as it is mandatory i would uh, uh, call madam madhu kamra to do the summation and propose our gratitude note over to you ma'am thanks dr pratibha mukherjee sahukar for interesting me with this precious role to make the closing remarks at the outset i wish a graceful evening to our much valued clique of speakers especially our guest of honor dr kirti tiwari carolyn hazing from ewa and dr ram sharma along with our patron Dr. R. K. Tiwari, equally worthy faculty members and our eager and enthusiastic takers, I, on behalf of Durga Mahavidyalaya fraternity, extend our deepest sense of appreciation to all for making this webinar on COVID-19 and society a productive meeting and learning, and of course more. To begin with, I quote from my memory. the words of winston churchill who once said one should never waste a good crisis for it helps us to reassess our lives like never before he also added a conscientious alarm by saying let us not return to bad habits certainly for every robust and lame reasons corona has been consuming tough fights and yet this evening stands interestingly accelerated i know accelerated sounds pretty strange but yes happy times gives this feel and validation this new found togetherness on virtual spaces is of a need for a resilient future along with our speakers all three in sequential flux offered on covid-19 the adequately needed seriousness being more than the survival crisis we cannot overlook fragile body fragile economy fragile neighborhood and fragile life preserving materialism if any assuringly the dictator for this evening has been desperate hope is our desperate fight and crisis as discussed here by a guest of honor and our key speakers karen hazing and dr sharma all collectively tried to shape up things for the better i take this occurrence to thank dr kirti tiwari our guest of honor for her vital and pragmatic energy to initiate ponderings over the signature theme dr kirti tiwari in her observations made a note of change preferences like no vacation no physical interaction to keep prona corona cruelty under no, no. check participants ka naam ek bar chat click ki thi to aaya tha to dekh to aate thank yeah. you madam for adopting existential coping mode along with emotional health and hygiene her suggestion of swot replica scale is equally inviting dr carolyn hazing for her robust participation from distal borders is an accomplishment of this meeting her talk establishment is sorry 
her talk established the serious thought and concern laid down by Farid Zakaria, a very well-known political scientist from America, who says that it is high time we worried about our grandchildren. Thereby, we also find that she gave us numerical details of corona fatality in order to structure the destructive intrusion of the virus on monstrous strides with no check and no bars. Here, I'm very happy to say that she places much faith on India and believes that India can be a remedial force. Our fear was concretized further with death strokes when she brought into the entire globe into focus and wanted India to be the scapegoat. Then comes the assertion that healthy and hygienic lifestyle is as much needed as a tough helmet for solidarity and economy because both at this phase stands equally fragile. Here one needs to accept that masks and face shields are relatively easy to enforce, but the two meter distance is not. Your belief, madam, in India's pathway of yoga and Ayurveda is your intellectual faith in the Indian students and their doings for the larger whole that is Vasudev Kutumbukam. Dr. Ram Sharma has rightly affirmed that life needs to be revamped and would surely for no escape reasons and this time the entire human race be under its blanket cover. Your clarion call to be respectful for our natural resources and move to cottage industries for healthy survival from now onward is equally and urgently pertinent. Likewise, you also competently called upon us to use a number of Indian herbs, which are our vegetative gems like tulsi, neem, coriander, to conserve the life which is much challenged. Every telling task needs to be told tellingly. And here you did competently well, sir. No? Your poetic recitations and excerpts from uh, holistic healing has been a cautious walk for all of us. Pertinently, I should say, it needs a posse of agile minds to shape the platform. And here, our team needs support and serious availability. Thanks that you all sewed our hospitality in big contentment and eager measures. Once again, I thank Dr. Keithi Tiwari, our chairperson, Carolyn Hazing, and Dr. Ram Sharma as being our key speakers. Sir and madams, we hold you in deep esteem. Our takers both as faculty members across the boundaries and students who made a commitment countable, lay assimilation and relevant queries all the more interesting. Thanks for ceremonizing the with your eagerness. My special thanks to a computer department, IQAC cell, and college fraternity for being industrious for the purpose in every day. And before I invite Dr. Sahukar to take it to the finishing line, I quote words of blessedness from Rohington Mystery's popular novel, Family Matters. I quote, I wish you health, I wish you wealth. I wish you peace in store. I wish you heaven on earth. What more can I wish you now? Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Kamra. Thanks for that lovely takeaway. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, with I'm very overwhelmed with the the, the way the whole international webinar has turned out to be with the, our uh, guest of honor, Madam Kirti Tiwari, Professor Carolyn Haising, Dr. Ram Sharma. So finally, everything, every good thing has to come to an end. So with this, 
I take uh, uh, permission from our patron principal, Professor Rakesh Tiwari, to uh, close the meeting. Thank you.